Takuma Ueno, born in Nagasaki, Japan, in 1838. He was a pioneer Japanese photographer. He's known for his fine portraits of important Japanese samurai and influential figures, and landscape photography of his hometown Nagasaki. Today, I'm gonna talk about his career and work. Be careful, child. Never they will fight. Mama said his words. Oh, so many times. I think he knew no better than the other guys. Riding on that bike. To talk about his career. I have to cover his historical background of the time he lived. During the Edo period, which is from 1633 to 1868, the Tokugawa shogunate had a strict isolation foreign policy to maintain stability because they saw the possibility of colonization from European countries. Japanese were not allowed to contact any foreigners, and Christianity was strictly banned. You might be able to imagine this from Martin Scorsese's movie Silence. The Japanese only believe in their distortion of our gospel, so they did not believe at all. They never. But there was only one European country that allowed to trade with Japan, the Dutch. Instead of revisions, they could deal in goods only at the port in Nagasaki, where Hikoma was born. In 1853, Commodore from the U.S. Matthew C. Perry appeared in Edo Bay with his fully equipped developed ships to intimidate Japanese people and open up Japanese ports. Good day to you, sir. I am Commodore Perry of the United States Navy. Since it's quite shocking, Japan gradually started to open to foreign countries, and the anti-shogunate movement started by Ishin Shishi, who are anti-shogunate activists, politicians, samurai. Pro-shogunate forces ended up getting defeated, and the Empire of Japan started from 1868 and started to take Western influences. In this chaotic shift from the shogunate to the empire, there are so many influential figures, and Hikoma was known for portraits of them. I wanna thank today's sponsor, Universe. Universe is a drag and drop website building app that allows anyone to grab a custom.com domain and create a professional photography site from their iPhone, iPad, or computer. There are a ton of customization options that allow you to design your site to match your visual identity as an artist. They have many unique templates, especially for photographers. I'm sure you can find one matching your taste, and their grid system allows you to create your website intuitively. It's basically just drag and drop. You don't need any professional web design experience. You can realize your idea on your website easily, and you can keep everything in one place: booking, contact information, social links, FAQs, and payments. Universe is free, but with Universe Pro, you can get your own .com custom domain and unlock custom menu style. You can get 25% off your first year of Universe Pro by using my code Toshiki25, or you can try Universe for free with this link. Both of these links are in the description down. Below. Please check them out. He was born in Nagasaki in 1838. His father was a Dutch scholar and worked for the Shimazu clan, who imported possibly the first camera in the country, a daguerreotype camera, which was the first publicly available photographic process. In 1852, Hikoma entered Nagasaki Medical College and started to study chemistry under the Dutch medical officer Jonas L. C. Pomp, who had a camera and little experience as a photographer, and instructed him in photography. When he asked Pomp, "What is photography?" Pomp answered, "It's a mysterious magic which can capture anything." This answer interested him in photography, and he got into it. But at that time, there were not enough resources to create specific chemicals, and he tried with cow's bones and blood. Then he was considered a mad scientist doing witchcraft of Christianity. In 1860, he had a contact with Swiss photographer Pierre Rossier. When he was in Nagasaki, Japan, for his project in Asia, and learned the Claudian process from him. He dived into photography from a chemical perspective. In 
In 1862, he launched a photo studio in Nagasaki. It's the first photo studio in Japan. At first, the business was unsuccessful, but it gradually grew because of the time and the location. As I said, the government was opening to deal with foreign countries at that time, and Nagasaki was one of a few cities allowed to trade with them. Foreigners wanted him to take photos of them for their memories of visiting Japan. It's a portrait of Antonio s f r a n c i s g o l d i n g He was a vice principal of Nagasaki Hospital, which was the first modern Western style hospital in Japan. And here you see g o l d i n g and medical students. It was in the middle of anti shogunate movement, so many influential figures were coming to Nagasaki to have connections with foreigners. Ryo Masakamoto was one of them. He was a samurai and influential figure of the establishment of the Empire of Japan. This is literally one of the most famous photos in the history of Japan. It's taken at his studio. And this is Hirofumi Ito, who was the first Prime Minister of Japan. They were always in a dead or alive situation, so they wanted to leave proof that they were there. That might be why no one was smiling in his photos. Well, they were not supposed to smile for photos in general at that time. Ueno had an important and close working relationship with Felis p i e t o who was an Italian British photographer. When visiting Nagasaki, p i e t o used Ueno's studio and photographed people there. Bieto and Hikuma walked around the city of Nagasaki and took photos. Through this experience, Hikuma reflected Bieto's skill and he improved his landscape photography. After a long time of isolation, it's essential to have connection with foreigners to learn something new. What's interesting is the basic aesthetic of photography, like composition, exposure, and posing, are pretty much the same as now. Even though there are many trends in these 150 years, fundamental elements we see in photos haven't changed much. In this sense, we can learn a lot from his work, which has the pure beauty of photography without any trendy destruction. We can see what makes photos look good, what makes us intrigued, what's important to take good photos. Even though subjects have been changing in the last 150 years, Camera have been evolving. I believe that the essence hasn't been changing much. His work has a historical value, capturing the last sunrise and the first influence of Western culture in Japan. And photography was one of just a few mediums which can document moments as it is. I'm kinda jealous of the time when photography had such a huge influence. Now, everyone can be a photographer. His work makes me think why I still like and take photos seriously in 2024.